Good evening and welcome to part two, episode two, whatever you want to call it, of Football's Finished. I'm Dave from the Falcon Blues TV and I'm joined with our regular guests. I say regular, it's the first episode, it's only the second episode. Uh, Barney and Anthony, gents, good evening and welcome aboard once again. Hello. Hi boys, you how okay? Fellas, you all right? Yeah, yes, I'm Jeff. Good stuff. All right, so we've got a, a few topics that we're going to talk uh, talk about again. VAR has sadly reared its ugly head, which we'll talk about. Um, we're also going to talk about Howard's Way, the new Everton video that's being released, um, the independent video. Guys, you've both, both watched it recently, um, and you know we're going to have a little chat about that. Also, one of the main talking points for the weekend for Everton was Everton's first away win in you know since World War Two against Southampton away uh, at the weekend. So we'll be talking about that, the re-emergence of Tom Davis, which is you know about time, uh, and Raheem Sterling and the recent issue with Joe Gomez at the England camp, and anything else the lads feel like ranting about. So we'll start really with Howard's way. Um, it's had a lot of. Uh, very good press recently. It tells the definitive story of Everton at the peak of their powers in the mid 1980s. Uh, I'll just read the spiel from the website. After a de- decade of struggle and misfortune, Everton became the best side in the land. Even better than their all conquering neighbours, Liverpool, they won the FA Cup, thrashed United 5 0, beat Liverpool home and away, and then strolled to the league title with a record amount of points. Steamrolling Bayern Munich and won the first ever European trophy, and for the time, were probably the best side in Europe. We'll never know for sure because they couldn't prove it. Um, mm. This is more the tale of Howard Kendall. Uh, it's a story of a team intent on greatness and a city united in defiance. And a story told by the heroes of the day, the men that made that history. Gents, you've both um, you've sat through it, you've enjoyed it, and you were really passionate about it earlier when we were talking about it. Get, let, let's hear your thoughts, lads. What do you think? I think it was absolutely fantastic. Obviously being being in my early 30s, I didn't unfortunately have the pleasure to watch or see any of that team play football. I've only I've grown up with Everton basically in the 90s and, and under David Moyes and the current couple of regimes. It is superb. I am so jealous of my father and his dad and my dad's mates that they had the opportunity to watch that team grow and unfold. And of course, it is an incredible travesty that that team was not allowed to take part in the the better European competition because who knows what they could have ultimately uh, achieved. But it is a fantastic film, uh, and I highly recommend anybody, not not just any Evertonian, but anyone who's got an interest in football in and around that time. It, it's, it's it's a fantastic fantastic film, um, and it also is a little bit of the soundtrack's amazing as well, Barney. I know you've you've watched it a few times as well. Yeah, it was fantastic. Brilliant. It was just a great time, wasn't it, for the whole the whole city. Um, and you're in your early thirties, aren't? Yeah. You've had. I tell you what, you've had every paper around, lads, haven't you? Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but as you say, yeah, it was just absolutely fantastic. I sat there watching it, and I, I, the thing that I got from it was the love for the club that that group of players had. You know, I, I, I'd make every single one of our team right now sit there and watch that and say just look at that passion the passion that them fellas are showing now in their 40s and 50s and 60s with with, with Bailey so the, the, the passion's still there you can see it Andy Gray get, getting all upset about when I would went to see him about leaving the club because Gary Lineker was coming in started crying you can see the emotion there with them you can set, you, you can tell how much they love the club and I just I just <clears throat> I'm the same with you I'm, just, I'm really really jealous of my dad, my uncle, my granddad, you know, all, all them lads of that era having the time of their life because of Everton. Because it was a, a really, 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 really hard time for anyone from this city. And to have that, you know, that must have just been a saving grace for them. It really must have been. A, I, I, and as you saw, as you will see if you, if you go to watch it, some of the fans saying, you know, oh, this is great. He said, if you haven't got a skill or a trade, you've got Everton Football Club. You know, it must have been something to keep keep people going, going to that match on a Saturday, and that's something that Everton need to get back to. I think I Everton need to get back to being that these people go out to earn the money and they're spending it coming to watch us. And sometimes you're watching that like that group of eleven there, and you just know there's no passion there. Is you don't see the passion in what you saw there. I think I read somewhere that um, 
uh, they're called the forgotten the forgotten team, the forgotten great team. Now I don't that they might be forgotten around the con- the country, but they say they're not forgotten in me. He said, I spoke to many many Liverpool uh, fans who said they loved Everton being that good because it, it what it done for the city as well. It was just there. Uh, I, I just found it absolutely fantastic to watch. It was um, it, it, it's it's been it's been put together absolutely brilliantly. It really has, and you know I would advise anybody to go watch it. Um, I think my girlfriend's dad's going to watch it, and he's a red, and I think he he'll love it. I really do, and um, I just think it's absolutely fantastic. I think anybody who comes and works for Everton Football Club, I'm not just talking about players, I'm talking about physio, people who sell the hot dogs, the drinks, I think everyone should be be made to go and watch that <laughs> film because yeah. that that is what Everton is about to this to this city and to this community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, should, should be part of the Pat says. Yeah, it should be. Totally, totally agree with you. Because at the moment, we are a million miles away from that. A million miles away. Do you know what? Do you know what shines through there? That's the bit that upset me. Yeah, but do you know what shines through there as well? It's, it's how how far ahead how Kendall was of his time. His man management oh, yeah. of players. You know, Peter Reid having his first training session still half pissed, saying to the gaffer, "You know, sorry, I was blab last night. I was up at celebrating coming to Everton. You know, do you like a drink, son? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you'll do great at this club. You've got a great chance." And Peter Reid tells himself, he showed his faith in me there and he would have run through brick walls for it. I don't think there's anyone on our side now that'll do that. Not one. No. I'll tell you what, Barney, I've got a good question for you coming out of that video. Mm. If you could have one player from that team in, that, in, the, in, 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 in your match on, on what week on Saturday against Norwich, who would it be? Who's the one player you're only allowed to have? Who would you have? Peter Reid. Without the shadow. Without, without hesitation. On a, you know, you win games by winning your midfield. You win that midfield battle, you've won your game. That's that. I mean, we probably wouldn't see him much because he'd keep getting sent off <laughs> <laughs> with, with this. You know what I mean? But, you know, be the ALOs. Or be the ALOs, yeah. But no, Peter, Peter, Reed for me. What about you? Um, Andy, um, not Andy, Graham Sharp, centre forward. Yeah. I know you talk about midfield, I said, but. Unfortunately, at the moment, we've got no one to score us goals. <laughs> that's and, that's true. And, and <clears throat> I can, my dad saw me that the goals he scored, and the way he led the line, the way he could, the, his intelligence. I think you've seen his link-up play with Andy Gray. <clears throat> I think he put <clears throat> a ball through to him on, off his chest. And yeah. he's, he, it's like he didn't even know. He, was, he didn't even look to put the ball through. You know, that link-up play that he could hold, hold the ball and put... And put balls through to people and score goals out of nothing. And I just think we haven't got anyone like that. And we haven't had any anyone to score as goals since Lukaku left. Uh, yeah, no, I yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that as well. But I just think I just think, you know, you look at Reed and Bracewell in that midfield. Um and uh, in particular, just that ball from Bracewell against Sunderland right on oh. right on to right on to Stevens toe from on the volley. Jeez. I tell you what, no, if that was nowadays and Iniesta or Zabi, you know, or, or, or you know, or even someone with the likes of um, Silva, you know, that people would be, oh, they'd be moist over that for weeks, wouldn't they? Yeah, definitely. I just or, or the, the lads, the lads that have put that together there, um, you know, they, they should be very, very proud of themselves. So that's it's an absolutely fantastic um, little it's a work of art. It really is, and you know, you 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 laugh and you, you cry and you get angry. You feel proud. Um, I think it's just absolutely brilliant. It's absolutely fantastically put together. It really is. Great stuff. So it it just sounds like you just want to you could gush over it all day, couldn't you? I mean, I, oh. I I I I watched the opening few minutes of it, and it was goosebumps from the start. And you just know you you're in for it. You're in for it sweet when you you know even with the the sirens at the start of red cars mm. and stuff like that. And then you go right. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna watch something that you you missed your dad, your, your ma and your dad, and everyone else has all enjoyed it, and you've missed it all. Yeah. And you're just drinking that in, and it, it's so, it is you right. It is so well put together, and you know, fair play to the lads who have done it. Um, yeah. If you want it, it it's available to buy on DVD through Amazon. It's available on Amazon Prime. You can get it. You know, in whatever whatever digital copies are available, and I if you're never, well yeah, if you're an Evertonian, you. You have to watch this. I think it be, it's almost almost becomes now a rite of passage. It's only been out less than a week, but yeah. you you need to watch this this video. Everyone should put it with next year's season tickets. <laughs> good shout, good shout, man. Definitely. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a rumor going around as well that it's uh, going to be 
highly rated on the IMBD, the BBDB database as well, whatever it's called. It will be, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Quality. Put it in so, for some awards. Give it the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Can okay. You imagine? Oh. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go from the superlatives to the farcical, I suppose. I think we'll just jump straight into it and get it out the way because otherwise. These three letters are the bane of my life. Yeah. Oh. Video assisted refereeing. I think our uh, hairy arms has got it spot on, Richard Keys. With him saying it's video referee as opposed to video assistant referee because the, the referees the referees get away with murder, aren't they? Um, I think I said, I said that last week. They don't want to take responsibility for the decisions. It's an absolute shambles and just bin it. Just bin it now. Because, yeah. honestly, what it's the inconsistency of it. So you had that John Lundstrom one <clears throat> at Spurs last week where his toenail is offside. His toenail. And they spent four and a half minutes looking at that. Now, from one angle, he's onside. From another angle, he's offside by a toenail. And then you had the Salah goal on Sunday where, from one angle, his kneecap's offside. And then from the angle that they looked at in 10 seconds, he's onside. So where's where, you know where's the balance there? Why 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 is the big teams are getting away with it? And the, this this is this is coming out for the teams to it's meant to be an equal balance for all teams. And again, it's showing the corruption within the FA and the Premier League for me. It really is, it's, and it's shining through. You can you can smell the stench of it, mm. or just horseshit. Well. We'll we'll talk we'll talk about what we what um what was dug out on the internet a couple of days ago from Scudamore about the Premier. League. Oh my God! Have but you before, But before we jump into that, Barn, I just wanted to just give you this one. Uh, this is what it was. This was in the paper yesterday. This is from VAR chief Neil Swarbrick. Marks the new system as seven out of ten, despite the criticism. So I mean, I, I would I would probably agree with this. I think it's quite that's that's quite an an objective assessment. I think Seven. I still think I think we still I think we need VAR. I think because you've got the human error in the game, and I think it, yeah, it is still creating errors. I said this last week, and I'm going to stick to my guns on this. I probably could get a lot of stick for it, but nevertheless, <clears throat> I'm going to stick. I think we need to keep it. I think what I think needs to happen is there's meant to be televisions on the side of the screen, and the referees can go and look at. I think they need to utilise that more. Yeah, Mike, can, can, can you get human error in a sport and? and and if that can reduce the human error, then, then I think that's still only a good thing. But yeah. I mean, and you, know, you can, and you can, you can, you can accept human error, and referee is going to make errors because you know they haven't got ten eyes. They're going to make errors. Linesmen are going to make errors because the plays are so quick nowadays. That's what this is in for, and it's still making the errors that human error makes. And it's because we've got the worst officials in the world. It's the best league in the world with the worst officials in the world. And if you don't get this offside rule to it down, they need to, they need to sort this offside rule down. It needs to go back. There needs to be clear daylight between the attacker and the defender. They need to start giving the advantage back to the attacker. Because goals... I, mean, I, don't, that, that, I don't know what clear and obvious means. That's the big thing to me. Well, now, they just, they, now they've said the offside rule isn't clear and obvious. The offside rule is you're either offside or you're onside. Now... To me, again, that's perception, isn't it? Because as I've just said there, I think the whole country, apart from um, Matt Letizia, said Lundstrom was onside. And, you know, that goal, that goal starts their keeper. I think there was 22 passes in that goal. It was a brilliant move. You don't really see goals like that oh, just allowed. Because you don't really see some goals like that just allowed because someone's hair is offside, do you? Oh, you know, you can go back further to, the, the, to, to Firmino's, Firmino's goal. Where his eyelash was offside because he killed it too was, too too much. He was he was off. He was that was a good eyelash though that Barney. It was a good <laughs> eye. <laughs> Wonder how much he spent on that. I, I hope that the, the I hope the next couple of weeks they're in, in this international break that these referees are able to go away, have another look at it, come back with some new ideas. Whether it be the the referees on the pitch are using these pitch side monitors more, mm. or whether there's a bit more guards. Um, because I'll tell you one thing now, if they're not going to pull it, they can't pull it off through a season. Look, look, footballs are hard to officiate. It really isn't. It's a contact sport. That's the first one. It's a contact sport. You're allowed to touch other players. And now, basically, what these reps are doing now is you can't touch them. 
you know, your little shoulder badge, your little shove here and there, that's allowed. No, that's given given down as free kicks now. Well, it is anywhere apart from Anfield anyway. Um, but, you know, it's not hard to officiate a match, is it? Let's be honest. It's just, for me, football's a simple game. It really is. And they're making it so complicated and so complex. Einstein has struggled with it. And and that's what's finishing this game off, is this technology. Just go back to where it's a referee and a linesman. I can forgive human error. I can, you know, you're going to slate him, you're going to say, you know, you, you, should, you shouldn't be making them mistakes. But on reflection, you can forgive it. You can't forgive VAR because there's a person there with replays. You can't forgive it. But I agree what you're saying, mate. And if VAR is staying, the referee needs to go look at it before going up to the fella saying 120 miles away. For sure. That makes sense to me. That, that, that's, it seems the sensible option. It does. I just don't think that that's being utilised in the moment correctly. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not working correctly. And you know what? It should have been. It got used in the World Cup. And the referee is in the World Cup are going over using the monitor. It, what was it? I think the longest people waited was two minutes in the, in the World Cup. You know what I mean? I know that's still long, but at least you're not waiting there for four and a half minutes. And it needs to communicate more to, to, to the fans because you, you're standing at the, at the match and you look at a big screen and it's saying VAR decision pending. Well, what? Check and penalty. Well, show was it? Let us see it. You know, why yeah, can't I, I think we should put it on the screen. Why, what, you know, what, 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 why can't we see it? <laughs> we, we paid the money to go there to that match. If you've got replays, let us see it, because we can't see it either. Because it's part, I mean, because people at home can watch it, can't they? Exactly, so, <laughs> that's yeah. what, you know what I mean? We're paying our money and to go to the match. That, it should it, be on the telly, shouldn't it? It's just farcical. The whole thing's farcical, and it's 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 beginning to make me really, really resent football. It really is. That whole VAR is making me feel it, it's not the sport that you love. By that, it's just not. It's just making you fall out of love. Sounds okay. So with with that, then what what's your take on? I mean, this is this is a this is a three year. This article was like three years ago now. Oh, the Scudamore um, one from Scudamore. And basically, he said, without being disrespectful to any club, we have a strategic plan at the Premier League. A strategic plan says put a new name on the trophy every six-year period. That's, well, right, OK. So when's it going to be Everton's turn? Or Man City have won it, what, the last tw- two times on the run? Yeah, so the last last team that were on the trophy set, uh, before City was, what, Leicester City in 2015-16. Yeah. Mm. So These and in that comments period, came on the back of that, didn't they? They, these yeah. comments are what three years old now, and they came on the back of Leicester City winning the Premier League. That's right. Uh, you know, I... <laughs> what's the plan? That, it's, it's that, that, I, think, I think that's a bit unfair to Leicester City, though. Yeah, really, because I, mean, I, I think I think that season Leicester were fantastic. But they won not... the league on the lowest ever amount of points. Didn't they what was it something like eighty-one? But they were they were brilliant. They were such a good side to watch. It was in, it was enjoyable football. You know what I mean? They still they did lose games, they did draw games, but they, you could see that that was a team that wanted to play. You look, you almost look back at the Everton side there, what we've just been talking about at the top of the show. They, yeah. they worked together so well. Yeah, you know, they Kante, great way, Kante they was your engine, like Peter Reid. You had Inchi, you know, like like Jamie Vardy, you're just a constant, you know, constant running. You had players there like Mares, who were just playmakers and could, you know, ball winners at the same time. Yeah. And they all work for each other. Ranieri was a likable fella as well. And I think I think it's a bit unfair to put you know, obviously this has come off the back is what we're saying. It's it's unfair to, to give Leicester that, that stick to say, Well, yeah, we, we let you win almost lads because we needed another name on the trophy. And that that's the disappointing <laughs> thing with these comments. But the, the fact that they've come out now it's weird how it has come out, but you can see the reasons why with VAR being as bad as it is. Especially when you look at some of the decisions that Liverpool are getting. I don't, um, I don't want to sound bitter, but there's some that that on on Sunday. Uh, all right, Bernardo Silva as I'm, I'm bored at first, and then Alexander uh, Trent Alexander as I'm bored as well. Stop the game and give the referee kick. Then that referee didn't know there was going to be an advantage. The ball was ping pinging about in the 18 yard box. Mm-hmm. It's just it's a load of bollocks if you ask me. So, so if let's fast forward then to another, I don't know, seven if, eight if, years time. If, Do you think well, yeah. there's going to be another two more names on that Premier League trophy? 
no, if, let's say for, let's say for example that the worst does happen and they were to win the league this year would would there be another two on top of that so you look no. at what Tottenham and then after that what Chelsea. Well, who's going to well, Chelsea have won it though haven't they what he means, not, he means not different with an, names. Oh, that's different what he means, names. doesn't he? Yeah, so you know, it's almost got to be someone outside the supposed top well, six, we, then, hasn't it? We'd be last on his list. You're giving it to Newcastle before they give it to us. Oh, <laughs> the the, the comments it. are very, very, very strange because it's this is competitive team sport. Yeah, you know, what, what, how, how what's can their you have plan? plan? What's the plan? How, why did you explain on what the plan is? Is the plan that they the referee, the, the officiating is easier on that team who they think they should win the league. Yeah, what I mean, the, the thing is, with Scudamore's no longer the. I don't think he's, he's the chief executive of the Premier League anymore, is he? No, no he, he got, got two. Got, off. Yeah, I think he got so quarter of a million pounds off every team, didn't he? Yeah, well, th- there you go, you see. So, you know, he, you'd like to know what is the up to date position in relation to those comments. I think will probably be the, probably the fair assessment of them because I, I honestly don't see how you can have a strategic plan. For a league involving twenty <coughs> independent football clubs, you know it, it doesn't make sense to me. I just don't know how it can work because, as like you said, it's a competitive sport. Them footballers want to win games, so how has he got a strategic plan to enforce one club winning um, thirty-eight games? Do you know what I mean? Uh, what Here's does he take? Does he tell the other team, "Listen, lads, you're playing these today. Here's a here's a couple of million quid. Just go out and be like six days ago." His role the- as the chief executive of the Premier League is to make the Premier League, as a brand, the best and biggest that it can be. And it's a commercial commodity, isn't it? And that's what it, all, it was for, for Mr Scudamore. It was to make as much money for the Premier League and for the teams in it as possible, whether it be through advertising, through rights on the television, etc. And you can tell you can tell by Sky and the Premier League and the FA cream all over Liverpool wanting to win it because yet they have got a big fan base. They got all the you know everyone in, you know they go they go to Australia you know preseason tours and sell out grounds, China, America. Yet they have got a big fan base. So can you imagine the income that they must be licking their lips that Liverpool are playing out the minute? They really must be. But it's not helping the fact that they're getting these decisions that that it's just blatant blatant corruption. It's just blatant cheating if you ask me. When it looks as obvious as it as it does in some cases, then yeah, you do have to definitely have to ask the questions, don't you? Mm-hmm. Football's finished, Barney. It's gone. Football's finished. Yeah. yeah. Gone. <laughs> but it, it it has. Don't you think about it? It really has. It's absolutely snookered. It's it's tight behind the black with the reds at the top of the table. <laughs> That's a analogy. Absolutely cracking analogy. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll. We'll move off that because we've had a good rant over the last two um, two sets. I never, I never, I never wanted, to, I never want to hear about it again. I just want it to be gone. Bang, well, you know, this is coming up in episode three. That's I'm te- yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, I know. All right, so we'll move, we'll move on to our next topic, which is um, Everton. As I said at the top of the um, the, the segment, Everton win their first away get away game since World War Two. It's been a long time coming. Um, and the emergence of Tom Davis in the last few games, gents. Just in time for the Jingle Bell song, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, do you know when? Do you know when Everton likes to see that, don't they? When we win away. Um, but Tom Davis has been outstanding, has he? I mean, I think everyone's half fell as fuming at how good he's been. Um, I'm, not, I'm not bothered if he walks around in a handbag, me. He can, as long as he's playing that well, he can do whatever he wants. Um, I mean, who, who would have thought Everton Evan win away? And you know. Uh, what was my prediction last week? 2-0 defeat. Oh, he said we came scrappy on that 1-0. First half, that, yeah, in that first 45 minutes. Oh, you, you just know, said 6-7. Some, some of the best football, you know, we've we, we've we've seen home or away for, for a number of months. It was fast. It was dynamic. We really got at them. Everyone looked up for it. We were solid at the back. Um, you know, but then the second half happened first. and Everton happened. We did. There was a bit of a wobble, you know. Uh, Mortgage Nyland got beat twice Oof. for their goal. Uh, you know, he was he, he was everything that sort of Tom Davis what wasn't wasn't. You know, and then you know we, we pushed on and we got the winner. City we put an absolute blind and ball in for that winner. That fella needs to stay right back. Oh yeah. God, he, he, uh, as I said, as, as I said, he's after the match. I'd love to have seen his heat map. It must have been wherever the ball was. He yeah. needs to learn. He needs to learn positional sense because at times they're better players. They, they, they take advantage of that. He, um, 
you know, I think it's just what Marco Silva needed going into the international break because I think if we'd have lost, I think he'd have been toast. I really do. I think we'd probably now have been looking at a new manager, whether it be uh, David Moyes or the worst thing I could have woken up to on Saturday morning, which was, what, Mark Hughes getting touted? Where did that come from, Barney? Sparky. <laughs> Joe, that, I, th- I think Everton put them out, you know, Everton put them out because then they can go, because then the fans are going to go, well, you know what, Moyes is the better of the two evils there. Everton definitely put that, I think Everton put that stuff out. Um, it's, it's either Everton or it's... It, and Joe, you know who's the worst for it? Sky Bet. So Sky Sports News or Sky Bet will put Mark Hughes is 8-1 uh, to one to become Everton's next manager. And Sky Sports News will go all over the place to go Everton and in talks with Mark Hughes. People start throwing money on him. And that's why. That's what that, I'm telling you now, it's all down to Sky Sports. That Sky Sports and Everton. It's got to be. Because there's no way on this earth that people would be happy with Mark Hughes. They'd be uproar. In fact, I know one lad would be. I, know, I, I, I hope he doesn't marry me, but Danny McGrath. Danny McGrath asked for Mark Hughes before Mark Silver because it's absolutely ructions and I what's that group him. <laughs> I think a couple of people left because of him saying Mark Hughes. There was murder. You, as but, you uh, say, you don't want him, do you? No, I don't want him anywhere near the football club and I probably would keep Mark Silver now. You know, if... Certainly going into the Christmas period and then turning into January. Let's hope we can, you know, we can hopefully we can try and push on now. It's it's amazing what an away <laughs> win, a good away win, albeit they're a poor team, does to the oh. collective fan base and to, into the fact, you know, you can go into work on a Monday morning with a big smile on your face and not be clubbed. The, the, the hangover feels a lot better as well, doesn't it, with a win? It really does. I mean, you'll feel rough, but you're a happy rough uh, yeah. with that win. Uh, but go, go, I mean, going back to Tom Davis, yeah, he's been he's been fantastic, he's been a revelation since he's since he's come back into the team. You know, he's uh, his passing's been <laughs> been been exceptional. You know, he wants to get forward and drive at defences, and he's, he's a real dynamo at the moment in that midfield. And and, and I think it would be unfair as well to, not to mention somebody else, which is Mason Holgate, who is you know he's keeping Michael Keane out of the team at the moment, and mm. you know alongside Yeri Mina there, he's forming a real good partnership and. I hope that's something that those two can maintain long into the season. He seems to, Hallgate seems to be Mina's pace. Uh, doesn't he? I mean, when Mina runs, Mina, 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 Mina knocks himself out with his knees. Don't he see how his knees go? God. <laughs> he runs like he's towing a caravan. <laughs> but yeah, Hallgate seems to be his pace, I think. And you're right, yeah, that them two seem to have changed the team a lot there uh, with Hallgate and Davis. And I think. Maybe it's that mentality of the young lads coming in as well, thinking, you know what, here's my chance here now, I'm going to keep the spec. And that's how it should be. That's the competitiveness within the group of wanting that starting eleven. Tom Davis has got his chance and he's, he's took it with both hands. And as long as he keeps playing to the standard he's playing, I think, uh, you know, I, I think he'll be called up for England very, very soon. And I think he'll be uh, he'll be one of the top players in the Premier League as long as he keeps playing the way he is. He can't go you know, if he has one game, he can't be putting his head down. He needs to show that strong mentality of, this is how good I am, and this is what I, and this is what I can uh, produce. Good stuff. Okay, so that's that's a decent segue taking us into uh, the international break there, Van. Nice one for that. Um, <laughs> the international break is now, you know, the next couple of weeks. England, uh, England are away. Um, they got two games. I'm not even asked who they're playing because I don't care for international football myself. I hate it, but. There's been a recent turn of events. I think did it happened yesterday, and it's come out in the wash today. Um, yeah. Raheem Sterling was um, told to leave the England camp early, following an altercation with Joe Gomez. Um, yes. I, I, I've heard I've, I've heard loads of Reds defending it, going, "Oh well, Joe Gomez went to shake his hand, and Raheem attacked him." I've just put, I just put, I just said attacked in, you know, inverted commas in the air, even though you can't yeah. see them on the radio. Um, and I just sat there with my head in my hands going, fuck off. <laughs> it, there's got to be more. There's no <coughs> way someone like Sterling, it, like short ass, is just going to go straight up and attack Joe Gomez. For, there's got to have been more to it than that. I don't want to know really because it's pathetic. Yeah. Or, but you know what? I like all that. Let that happen. Keep Sterling in there. That that build that builds character at the end of the day. I love all that me a little bit of internal fighting. Boss, go ahead. This, 
this this is absolutely pathetic. This that's going on now at the moment. Mm. I couldn't care less. This happens. Imagine, imagine, imagine rugby players. <laughs> imagine what, 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 you know, if they've pushed and shoved each other, rugby players have been knocking seven bells out of each other in the dressing room, probably, and they this, shake hands after. This is this, absolute garbage. There must be no news today on Sky News at all no. for this to come out and for the, Gareth Southgate to all. He's held a press conference today over this. This oh, is God. absolute a load of me eye. This, this really is Barney finished football finishing, having a press conference over two lads, moaning, having a bit and of a scuffle before the game. It's the prime example. You want to see this? It's the prime example of football's finished. Look, yeah, going back to Howard's Way, there's a part of Howard's Way where Howard Kendall took them all for the Chinese and they all slated each other. And I think yeah. Inchi said, Inchi said, you didn't take it personal because you probably knew deep down that you were playing shit. And if you couldn't take it, then maybe this game isn't for you. So, Sterling, Gomez, have it out with each other. Punch fuck out of each other. Couldn't give a shit if it's in the news or not. It happens in football. And, and kiss I just make up. Yeah. And then shake hands. Shake hands. Say that's it. Done now. You, you piss me off. You piss me off. We've done it now. We've settled it. No, hmm. as you say, none of this garbage of press conferences saying I've had to get rid of someone from the camp. It's a shit house move. Be there's a manager. A, there's, deal there's, with a crack and, there's a cracking tweet that I saw earlier on, and I, th- I think it was more. It was more to like compare. Sterling and Joe Gomez, like, you know, obviously Sterling's first choice, Gomez hasn't played much. Imagine if it was Messi and one of the fringe Argentinian side players and he sent <laughs> Messi home. Well, you know what I mean? They'd be fucking murder. Which, yeah. is, which, is, which is, this is how pathetic the whole thing is. You're right about the press conference. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's bollocks. It's bollocks. And, who the, wants, and not just who like, wants to know that? It's like... It's like feeding time at the zoo with the press conferences. They're all there queuing up to ask questions. And I watched it live this afternoon because I've got nothing better to do. And, <laughs> you know, they're all there asking these stupid questions. And the manager's just saying around and went, uh, I, I don't, I've not got anything to say about this. I've not got anything to say about that. Well, if you've got nothing to say, why have a press conference in the first place? What and it's shit, absolute dope. It's a shit house mood from Southgate as well because that just shows that he can't manage people. You mm. deal with that. You no, know, if, you you know, if you had an argument with a fellow colleague at work, yeah, manager to drag you into the office and deal with it, wouldn't he? Whereas Southgate's gone, no, Sterling, go home, to that. Fucking deal with it. Otherwise, you know, and I'll tell you now, the next time they play, and if Gomez is playing, there's going to be a hefty tackle there. It's just, it's just adding fuel to a fire. Which what, 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 I don't mind. Watch Sterling not bother. Watch Sterling just go, nah, fuck it, you know. Yeah. Imagine the uproar if he just suddenly said, you know what, if he's going to send me home, over a shitty altercation like that, I don't want to play. Yeah, exactly. And just imagine the uproar from that, and it, it'd be absolutely fucking ridiculous. I hope he fucking knocked him out. <laughs> well, apparently he's got he's got this scratch on his eye, Gomez, or below his eye or something. I say I can imagine Sterling to be a scratcher, little bitch. Boys, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you want to wrap? Do you want to wrap it up? If you got anything else you want to get off your chest? It's, you know, it's late in the middle of the week. You know, hunt days tomorrow. Get it off the chest right now, Fred. Just, just, I mean, I, I, I want to finish on a positive because I felt I was a bit negative last week over Everton with my prediction of them getting beat 2 0. You know, well done with the away win. And if I could just reiterate the opening remarks that we made about how it's way, go and buy it. It's absolutely sensational. Yeah, it really is. It really, really is. And I'll tell you what I, what I got out of it as well is how much I'm going to miss Goodison. Um, yeah. when we move that's you know we are going to miss that ground the, the old lady it really is it's special it's a special place um, and it just uh, that by that by Munich game obviously I'm um, younger than Ant so I didn't see it um, in its full glory that night where the people have been saying that's the best atmosphere they've ever been to and that's what, and as um, Graeme Sharp said that weren't even Evertonians that was his friends and family from Glasgow who followed Rangers and Celtic everywhere that they were all saying you know, it's the best atmosphere they've ever been in and I just think it's going to take a while for our new stadium to build that atmosphere and just Goodison's going to be a big it's going to be a big big day when, uh, when we lose that place I think it's one of them as I've I've pointed out we've got to be hitting the ground running with the new stadium quite literally you know we've got to be going in riding the crest of a wave with you know either a trophy or a European 
knowing that we're going to be playing in the European Cup and stuff like that, or just something that just gives us that, okay, there's your push. Yeah. Go and build your atmosphere now because you know this team's capable. We've done, we're, you know, we're in a good good place and everything. But yeah, I completely agree. I mean, growing up on Goodison Road myself, it's going to be a hard day not like <clears throat> going out my mum's house and not and knowing that Goodison isn't there or I'm not going to be going there on a Saturday. It's going to be absolutely hard. It's sad, definitely. And I'll tell you what, change one of the change one of the names of the roads to Howard's Way. Good shout. Yeah, good shout. Yeah, definitely. Very good shout. Definitely. What do you think the name of the day, that big, tall, tall stand they're going to call? I mean, I know people they call it the Blue Wave, but I think that's a bit poncy me. I don't want, don't want to be sitting in a stand called the Blue Wave. I feel like it's like something the Razzle changed its name to, isn't it? <laughs> the Blue Dragon Chippy Stand. Blue... <laughs> <laughs> Chas, you goody. No, I, I don't know. I, I think I, I'd like to try and keep it something similar where, you know, it's still called the Bullens Road, the Gladys Street, the main stand. I know right. just, try, just try and keep it familiar. Yeah. But definitely. then it's building like, well, what side is going to be the main stand? What side's going to be? Do you, reckon that, do you reckon that tall one's going on the on the Mersey, don't you? So, the, so um, the, 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 tall, the tallest stand, the one that's going to have to 20,000 people in it, mm. that's going to be on the, on the docks of the Mersey. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one that one definitely. I think that 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 that's gonna be one of the big discussions and the big talking points as as we get near it. I think definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, but and, and other business as well. Just like to say, oh shit, West Ham. Are. I'm just gonna finish on that. West Ham is shit, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fucking made up. And it's all come about since Guilty Sigurdsson done that absolute whale the input. And as you said, Declan Rice, absolute myth. Myth. Um, Mays Wilshire, made that Jack Wilshire slide all the way to fucking Kirkdale Station. <laughs> the little biff to that. <laughs> Sad. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish up now, then, lads. So, thank, uh, thanks once again for for joining us. We had a good thirty-five minutes of ranting there, so that was pretty cool. Um, so please make sure you're subscribing to Falcon Blues TV and to Grand Old Team TV. Uh, thank you again to Barney and to Anthony for joining us. I'm sure we'll be back next week with more. We'll probably be talking about VAR until we're blue in the face, to be honest with you, lads. So that's going to be one of the next talking points again. I tell you what, um, I'll be made up if Montenegro beats us, the beat England, now we're in a VAR decision. Oh, I'd <laughs> love that. I would love that. With no Sterling, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Gomez on goal. <laughs> yeah, offside. <laughs> uh, we'll wait and see on that one, lads. All right, so that concludes today's episode. If you want to subscribe, please do. Um, if you want to catch us on Twitter, we're at Falcon Blues TV and Falcon Blues 1878. I'll drop Barney's and Ant's uh, Twitter accounts on there as well in the comments. But if, you, if you've enjoyed today and you've got any comments that you'd like to add, please drop them in the comments section below. Until then, boys, nice one. Up the toffees. Up the toffees. Football's finished.